everyone. Good day. Welcome to our first part of Module 1 in Grade 10 Mathematics. Sequence We will be focusing on Lesson 1, the Arithmetic Sequence. Are you ready? Let's start. So learners, at the end of the lesson, you must be able to generate and describe patterns, determine the next few terms of sequences given the nth term, appreciate the significance of patterns through appropriate and accurate representations by citing models, and solve problems involving arithmetic sequence. Before going through our lesson, let us process first this problem. This problem can be read to your mathematics modules in the pre-assessment part 2, page 7. This activity is entitled, Hold on to Hope. Because of the Super Typhoon Ulysses, there was a big need for blood donors, medicines, doctors, nurses, medical aids, or any form of medical assistance. The Red Cross planned to involve the different agencies, organizations, and offices, public and private, local and international, in their project to have massive medical services. The Red Cross contacted the first three of the biggest networks, and each of these networks contacted three other networks, and agencies, organizations, and offices, and so on, until enough of these were contacted. In took one hour for an organization to contact three other organizations and all the contacts made were completed within four hours. Assume that no group was contacted twice. Number one, suppose you are one of the people in the Red Cross who visualized this project. How many organizations do you think were contacted in the last round? How many organizations were contacted within four hours? Number two, make a table to represent the number of organizations, agencies, and offices who could have been contacted in each round. So, I will give you time to process and answer the questions. Pause this video and resume if you are already done. The time starts now. Okay, time is up. Now, check your answer on your desk and together, let us process the problem. Let us read the problem together. Because of the super typhoon Ulysses, there was a big need for blood donors, medicines, doctors, nurses, medical aids, or any form of medical assistance. The Red Cross planned to involve the different agencies, organizations, and offices, public and private, local and international in their project to have massive medical services. The Red Cross contacted the first three of the biggest networks, and each of these networks contacted three other networks and agencies, organizations, and offices, and so on, until enough of these were contacted. It took one hour for an organization to contact three other organizations and all of the contacts made were completed within four hours. Assume that no group was contacted twice. So number one question, suppose you are one of the people in the Red Cross who visualized this project. How many organizations do you think were contacted in the last round? Correct. There were 81 organizations. How many organizations were contacted within 4 hours? Absolutely. 120 organizations were contacted within 4 hours.
Number two, make a table to represent the number of organizations, agencies, and offices who could have been contacted in each round. So, let us denote X and Y. Let us denote X as the number of rounds and Y as the number of organizations. So, in the first round, we contacted three organizations. In the second round, we have contacted nine organizations. In the third round, we contacted 27 organizations. And in the fourth round, we contacted 81 organizations. And so on. Have we arrived with the same answer? Good job! You got it right. Now, let's move on to our lesson. Before that, let us first identify these examples. What is the next shape? Correct. Square. How about this one? What is the next figure in the sequence? Correct. It is letter A. Why? Because the sequence consists of prime numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, and the next prime number is 11. Letter A. Correct. What is the missing element in the sequence? J30, J blank, A31, S30, O31, N30. The correct answer is letter C. Why? It is the first letter of the month and the corresponding number of days. Next, what are the missing elements in the sequence? Correct. The answer is letter A. Vowels and corresponding order in the alphabet. How did you find the right answers? Do these patterns have guided you to come up with your answer? How are sequences used to model and solve some mathematical ideas and real-life situations? Good job! Today, we will be learning about one of the many patterns in the mathematics world. Are you excited? Then, let us start. In this lesson, we will have a game. This is called Fix Me Game. I will give strips of paper you will fix to be able to get the right answer. You can raise your hands or clap if you want, if you are already done. After every round, I or we will be exploring your answers. Got it? Okay, let us start. First off, you got it right. Are you familiar with these concepts? Yes. That has something to do with sequence. A sequence is a function whose domain is the finite set 1, 2, 3 to the n or the infinite set 1, 2, 3. So there, we can see that if n is 1, then 3n plus 1 or the a sub n is 4 and so on. Later, we will discuss how a sub n will then be generated. Second round. Time is up. The answer are common difference and arithmetic sequence. There are many types of sequences. Now we will be focusing on arithmetic sequence. 
What is arithmetic sequence? An arithmetic sequence is a sequence where every term after the first is obtained by adding a constant called the common difference. From the example earlier, we have a sequence there and that was the set of 4, 7, 10, and 13. Is this an arithmetic sequence? Yes. What is the constant that is added to each term to obtain the next term? Yes, that's 3. Therefore, the common difference is 3. Next round. Time is up. The answers were infinite sequence and finite sequence. There are two types of sequences, the finite and the infinite sequence. Their difference is that finite has an end and an infinite is endless. How can we identify which one is a finite or infinite sequence? It is through ellipsis. If this happened to appear in a sequence, then that is an infinite sequence. Otherwise, it is a finite sequence. For example, from the from the example earlier, we have 4, 7, 10, and 13. This is a finite sequence. It has 4 terms. However, if we write this as 4, 7, 10, 13 with the existence of ellipses, then that will be an infinite sequence, which we do not know how many terms it has. Gets? Next round. Correct. The answers were the rule and the rule a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus the product of the quantity of n minus 1 times d. So now we have learned about the sequences, finite and infinite sequence. Let me cite some example. Let us take the number of matchsticks 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19, 22, 25, 28, and 31. We see that the number of matchsticks forms an arithmetic sequence. Suppose we want to find the 20th or the 50th or the 100th terms of the sequence. How do we get them? Do you think a formula would help? If so, we could find a formula for the nth term for the sequence. In this case, it will not be difficult since we know the common difference of the sequence. This is where we would use your answers, the rule of arithmetic sequence, which of the form a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus the product of the quantity of n minus 1 times p. So, to understand this further, consider this table below and complete it. Observe how each term is rewritten. How else can we write the terms? What is a sub 5? Correct. 4 plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. What is the formula for determining the number of matchsticks needed to form n squares? In general, the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence with a sub 1 as first term and d as common difference are a sub 1, a sub 1 plus d, a sub 1 plus 2d, and so on. If a sub 1, if a sub 1 and d are known, it is easy to find any term in an arithmetic sequence by using the rule a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus the product of the quantity of n minus 1 times d. Example, what is the 10th term of the arithmetic sequence 5, 12, 19, 26, and so on? 
So the solution we have, since a sub 1 is 5, or the first term is 5, and the d is 7, or the common difference, then a sub 10 will have 5 minus the product of the quantity of 10 minus 1 times 7. Got it? Got it. Next round. Correct. What you have done was finding the arithmetic means. What is arithmetic means? So arithmetic means is that you are tasked to find a certain number of terms between two non-consecutive given terms. Congratulations! You did a good job. Now, let us assess your understanding with this activity. I want you to find a pair and answer this in your paper. Wow! Incredible answers! How did you find the activities we had? Did you cooperate with your group in winning the game? How can you identify or describe an arithmetic sequence? How can you identify an infinite or finite sequence? How do you get the nth term of an arithmetic sequence? How did you illustrate an arithmetic sequence? Great answer, students! It seemed that you already know what is an arithmetic sequence. Now, get one half sheet of paper and answer the following. Amazing learners! You got the answers right. For your assignment, please read the following. In a group of three, observe things around you or research about things that generate patterns. Choose one and make a presentation about it and try to relate it in our lesson. That is all for today, young learners. I hope you have learned something. Thank you and see you on our next video.